It is official. We are back, and we have. We're we're here together. <laughs> I know some people can't see us right now, but we are here together. Me and David Marks, quality STL, unbelievable. What's up? Yeah. So welcome everybody to the Auto Authorities podcast. I am so excited to be here. This is a first for us. Correct. So, uh, so this is a first for us. We're usually in different locations, but again, if you're listening to this, you wouldn't know that we weren't in different locations. Our wonderful technology, and boy, do we have a show today for real? For real? Hey, so we have got the world's greatest scams uncovered live today. You're going to hear about all kinds of scams that you need to know about to protect yourself the next time you're buying and selling a car. You ready to do this, Dave? I thought you were going to say we're the greatest scam artist. Well, no, and hopefully someone doesn't <laughs> edit that. <laughs> we are just really, really happy to be here. And I, this is actually going to be probably one of my very favorite episodes because mm -hmm. this is what I do on a regular basis. I, I'm on local media here in St. Louis. Um, teaching people about this stuff. And now it's time to let our loyal listeners listen to all the wonderful things we're going to share. And we're going to do it right after this. Have you ever felt like you were taken for a ride when buying, selling, or repairing your car? Well, not anymore. I'm Jay. And I'm Dave. And this is the podcast that tells you what to watch out for, whether you're buying, selling, or repairing your car. With 47 years of automotive experience, we are the Automotive Authorities. This podcast is sponsored by iAuto Agents. We're real estate agents for cars. And Quality Auto STL. Trusted services with no surprises. Boom! Woo! All right, we're back. And if you're just joining us, we are talking about the world's greatest scams uncovered I'm hoping that everybody leaves here today with some golden nuggets. We're going to have some fun while we're doing it. We're going to talk a little bit about Bobby and some of his cousins. <laughs> Guido. Guido. <laughs> yes, there's going to be some Guidos today. <laughs> and Guido's in a different way than we've talked about before. But before we get going, I'd like to thank Techie Tony with Techie Tony Media. He's our producer of this podcast. He has been just doing an incredible Gosh. job, um, you know, He's also offering something special, Dave. Did you know that? Yes. What is that? He is going to give uh, everybody a 15-minute free consultation if you want to start your own podcast. How nice is that? I'm, I'm going to start my own. Simply send him an email at start, <laughs> techie, start at techietonymedia.com. That's start at techietonymedia.com. And one other gift to all of our listeners, if you're listening, this is a gift. Listen closely. If you take out your phone and you type in the numbers 57838 and in the messaging section, the word car, and it's scrolling on the bottom of our screen, it's 57838 and type in the message car and you will be able to have a free ebook that I wrote personally that will give you the tips that you need to buy a car without the nonsense. We all know what that means. It's step by step. It's a great cheat sheet. It's something from 26 years of experience. Just type in the uh, 57838 and the word car, and you get the free ebook and you get alerts for all of our podcasts. So we're ready to get into this. And I want to talk about my favorite scam that <laughs> most people don't even know exists. Really? Do you know what that is, Dave? Your favorite scam is no, I, I'm actually clueless, honestly. All right. It's called the fake dealer scam. Oh, Mr. Curbstoner. When Guido sends Bobby out there to pawn the car off. Well, here was what the fake dealer scam is. And I'm going to use an example. Um, here at I Auto Agent, um, we help people buy cars. And I had a client hire me, and he basically said, hey, I need to buy a Mercedes. Oh, yeah. cool. So usually either the client finds the car or we'll find the car. In this case, the client found the car. 
for this place. So it was a place called HotWheelDeals.com. Remember that, because <laughs> this is important. Hot Wheels, isn't that trademarked? I hope everybody's taking notes here. So when I looked at the car, I looked and I, it, it had decent pictures, right? It had four pictures, but it didn't have any VIN or anything. There was no identification for the car. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I contacted so-called the dealer, but it wasn't a real dealer. And I will tell you real, real uh, here in a second how I knew it wasn't. I contacted the dealer and I asked him for the VIN. And sure. you know what they sent me? <laughs> they didn't send me the VIN. They sent me a Carfax. And this Carfax looked completely legit. It had all the little servicings on it. But there was one thing that stood out to me that I knew right then and there it was a fake there was, dealer. There was no VIN on the Carfax. No, there was a VIN. So uh -huh. it actually pulled up and everything. But I did my own Carfax because we have a subscription to Carfax and auto check. I pulled my own Carfax, and on the bottom of the Carfax, it said HotWheels.com on their Carfax. You know what it said on my Carfax? <laughs> it didn't say HotWheels.com. So what did I do, Dave? I started taking out my magnifying glass, <laughs> and I became Mr. Car Investigator. Detective J on That's the case. Right. <laughs> So what I did was I Google mapped, and this is important for everybody to listen to. We all trust these online services, right? We think that they're all real. They have pretty websites. But when you go on, on your website, or I'm sorry, you go on your computer and you do a Google Maps and you put that address in, guess what the address <laughs> was, Dave? No man's land. A vacant lot. Wow. And it wasn't a car lot. It was a freaking grass field. How scary is that? Wow. And the man, the man, our good client that hired us, okay, our good client thought that this was real. And here we, we play. He was our, close to probably sending somebody some money. He was until investigator J at <laughs> iAutoAgent.com stepped in. And so right then and there, it told me, oh, my gosh, there's other people out there that are going to run into these fake dealers. Yeah, absolutely. But I went even further, Dave. You know what I did next? Called the guy. I looked at the number online, and I did a Google search. Mm. And the number – so if you're dealing with a reputable company, you put the number in. It's going to have numerous Google – uh, listings, right? Really? I'm tempted to try my number. Well, it's going to have a, a, quite a few. Well, it'll at least have your Google business. Yeah. Okay, sure. so there's nothing there. Here's another scary thing. Um, on the website itself, it had frequently asked questions, and it said, here is how you avoid scams. Sure. Yeah. I do, just Googled my number. It pulled up. Yep. So yeah. do not... So So basically... How do you avoid scams? So it had frequently asked questions. So what they're doing is they're going as far as possible to try to trick these people to giving them money. Wow. And they had a special, um, it was called an escrow account, basically, where you put the money in and they give you a 10-day money back guarantee. Does this sound familiar? There are a yeah. lot of companies out there. We'll give you a seven-day, a 10-day money back guarantee. Well, guess what? When you put the money back in, or you put the money in, it's not coming back out. <laughs> no. Okay. That's an offshore bank account. Who knows where? Here's the here's what the final draw, and this is an interesting one for you. I actually looked up the URL, and I don't even know if Hot Wheel Deals is out there, but we have like the FBI involved and everything. Damn. Yeah. So I went on. Um, so I am on Fox Two and Channel Four News as an automotive expert advisor yes. here in St. Yeah. Louis. So. What we did was, is we did a search for HotWheels.com, and guess what? It was registered as a URL, and so were four other URLs in another part of the world. Wow. And so, I can't remember, I think it was Atlanta, Georgia is where it said it was, and it was registered in some third world country. 
So here's the bottom line, and this is this is the moral of the story. Don't trust everything that you see online until you start doing research. If you actually have downloaded my ebook, by uh, you actually can put 57838. That's 57838 in your text message and put the word car. You can download my free ebook and I will walk you through the steps. It's all written down. It's in nice format on how to buy a car and stay safe. I mean, it should be just one step. Just call Jay Grossman and I auto agent. Or you can do the or you can do the 17 steps in, in the book that I have. Here's the bottom line. The reason why Dave and I do these things is to is to make people aware. And when I tell you about the next scam, you are going to freak out. Who's ready? I am. I am. And, and, and here, everybody who is listening to this, please like and subscribe and share this with people. Let your friends and family know about this stuff because that's why Dave and I go on this platform. I don't get paid a dime to do this. No. Has anybody paid you? No, hell no. No, we do this out of the goodness of our heart. So let's talk about the mileage rollback scam. Oh, you got a good one. I remember this. I think you're on the news about this one, right? Yes. So we did a story last year and this guy, well. This involves a couple things. It, it involves it, jumping title and rollback, right? Yes. And for and, and listen closely so you understand what all these things are. So this involves odometer rollbacks. It involves jumping title, and I'll explain what that is. So a really good client of mine for many years, Chris, called me, and he's a he's a very smart businessman. He runs a successful construction company, and he came to me and he says, Jay, I think I just got scammed. And I said, well, what happened, Chris? Oh, man. He buys this 2008 Yukon XL beautiful vehicle, and it he thinks it has 140,000 miles on it. Oh, not bad. Yeah, and he paid $8,000 for the vehicle. This is what Chris didn't know, and this is something so freaking simple. And, like, I even offer this to my viewers. Like, if you want a free Carfax and you don't want to pay $40 for it, send me an email at info at iautoagent.com, info at iautoagent.com. I will send you a free Carfax if you're listening. Okay. Just send me an email. I just want to protect you because Chris didn't do that. Oh, guess what Chris did, Dave? He just, he, you paid for it. <laughs> well, Chris bought a vehicle. We thought a hundred had 140,000 miles. Damn. So he gets the title, and the title did not match the Carfax that he had pulled earlier. So on the Carfax that he had that he was given, the car did have one hundred and forty thousand miles on it. Oh. But in reality, the car actually had two hundred and forty thousand miles. Damn. Yes. And what you want to do, and this is such a golden nugget, when you're going out and looking at these cars, you want to match the VIN on the car you're buying to the VIN on the title. If they do not match, do not buy the car and run as fast as you can. Yep. When you see some of these things on Facebook Marketplace and these cars are lower price, and I, when I mean lower, I mean significantly lower. When you see a Range Rover for $3,000, <laughs> okay, when you see these things, come on, use your best judgment. Yeah. Look at the little, look at the little boy, a little uh, angel on your shoulder that's trying to tell you, hey, you might want to think twice about buying sure. this car. When it's too good to be true, it probably is. Exactly. So what happened was, and this is another golden nugget. I don't know if you know this, Dave. But there is a device that you can buy on Amazon, and I've seen them as low as twenty dollars. Hmm. They hook up to your mobile phone, and within seconds, I can roll back an odometer on any car I want. What? Yes. And people thought that that's that's the old days. No, 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 no. And this is only part one of the world's greatest. Yeah, games. I thought those days were done and gone with everything being through control modules and. Body the control modules, or they're all in a module now. Well, here's what happens. These little things are computers, 
and they hook up to the OBD2 on the bottom of your car. Every car's got one. And they get around all the, the firewalls or whatever, and they can like literally go on their phone and type in any mileage they want. Wow. So what this guy did is he's like, okay, 240,000 miles, that sounds a little high. 140,000 miles, eh, that's better. Yeah. If he would have put 40,000 miles, that would have thrown up a red flag, but 140,000 miles on an 08. Oh, oh yeah, no, I, I probably would have got me too. I've been doing this almost as long as you have. Here's the other scam that happened, and please listen closely on this. When you are selling a car, make sure that the buyer signs the title after you, and now it becomes the buyer's car. Guess what happens, everybody? I don't know if you, oh, we have people making comments right now. Um, there are people making comments. Uh, thank you for making those comments. Well, I would have them sign it first before you signed it. That's what I do. Well, here's here's the bottom line. Both of you guys have to sign yeah. it. That, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. It doesn't matter. So what happens is, is when you don't sign that title, um, it's called jumping title. And this is why people do it. There's this little thing called sales tax. In the state of Missouri. Yeah. And if you're in another state, you probably have sales tax. Unless you're, what, in Oregon? and I, I have no idea. I think Oregon's like one of them. But anyway, here's what happens. When you, when you buy a vehicle, you pay sales tax in Missouri on the amount of money that you're paying for the car minus the, if, if you're trading a car or you sell a car. In the state of Missouri, you have 180 days to claim your sales tax credit. Now, that's not the case in every state. So what happens is if you buy a $20,000 car and your sales tax rate, let's say is 9%, you're going to be writing a check for 1800 bucks. Yeah. So if you buy the car and you don't sign the title, yep. then guess what? You you can sell that car to anybody yep. illegally, of course, and that's car curb stoning. Yep. And what happens is, is that person's going to get that car and they think that they bought it from you. So if I'm buying your car, and let's just say I'm Mr. Thief. And hey, Bobby. I, yeah. Well, no, Bobby's, Bobby's not a thief. Bobby just makes bad decisions. Oh, okay. We're going to say Guido. Guido. Guido's um, long lost brother. <laughs> let's say I'm Guido and I'm buying a car and I don't sign the title. I can go over to Mary and I can sell that car to Mary. And Mary thinks she's buying it from me, but she's really buying it from you. And guess who's responsible for that car? You. you. <laughs> so when when you jump title, um, it can become very, very bad. And this is what we did. We wound up actually calling the person on the title. And we said his name was Grant. Yeah, I remember yes. watching this yes. on the news. Yep. We called Grant and we said, hey, Grant, did you sell a car to... Uh, I don't remember what the guy's name was. And he's like, no, I, I, I never, I never did. I'm sorry. Did you say, I'm sorry. I didn't remember the guy's name that sold, that Grant sold it to. Yeah. He asked Grant if he sold it to Chris. Chris is the one. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, no, I didn't sell it to Chris. I said it sold it to this other guy. And it was like, oh, wow. Scam, yep. scam, scam, scam. So here's the moral of the story. You're buying, I'm selling, you're selling a car, sign the title with the buyer. Secondly, Bill of Sale, uh, Form 1957 in Missouri. Google it, Form 1957. This is also going to be in my ebook. You can read it. It's all there. It's good, good information. All If you're just joining us, text 57838. And in the message, car. It's also scrolling about on the bottom of the screen. How to buy a car without the nonsense. But um, we're going to be talking about another... Uh, another scam here and we are on a roll and this is only part one right this is part one we have so much more to say but dave uh let's talk about the fake check yeah so what if you're selling a car and i i i knew this is a scam but i just wanted to see how far it would go so you got a car posted on marketplace Craigslist, whatever and somebody messaged you and says i want to buy your car i'm good with the price no negotiation, no nothing, but they can't come pick it up physically. So they want to send a cashier's check, usually for more than what you're selling the car for. And then they'll for sell For inconveniences. They'll like, oh, for your inconvenience. And, for some and, 
yeah, yeah. Or, or or what it is, it's to pay the transporter. I think that's what it was in this case. To pay the transporter, so they're going to send a transporter. So I actually played along with this. I said, sure, yeah, I'll sell you my car, blah, blah, blah. So I get this check. It actually showed up showed up in the mail. And I, I'm, this was a few years ago, so I'm trying to remember. I, I remember, I'm pretty sure that I did some homework and found out that that person didn't have an account at that bank. So if I cast that check and set up a deposit that check, because checks could take 10 to 14 business days to really officially clear and go through the bank, even in today's world, right. especially an out-of-state check. So by if I would have went through with this, you know, that guy sends a transporter, he picks up the car. By the time that check comes back, the car is gone. Yeah. And here's the thing, and, and it sounds so like, common sense i see it time after time after time again yeah not just on our news but on other people's news just just you know just google it the fake check scam or or there's probably a name for it yeah but it's just it's one of those things that use your common sense listen to the little angel on your shoulder that's trying to say hey wake up this isn't what you think it is yeah um just think about how you bought vehicles. You know, if you bought on going to use vehicle, if somebody's approaching you in the exact opposite way, wait a minute. I've bought a couple of vehicles before in my lifetime. Yeah. That's not how I bought a car. Why are you want to buy it this way? Absolutely. That's a huge red flag. Yeah. And you know, the eBay's where they where you have to where they give you eBay cards and stuff. T- type in the eBay scam. That's another another scam. We can get more into detail. We have a major, major thing that we want to talk about here in a second. But before I forget, if you're just joining us, just type in uh, 57838 on your phone, on your text message, 57838, and then type the word car, and you're going to get my free ebook. A lot of these things that we're talking about, it's free. It keeps you safe. And speaking of safe, we've got one more thing to talk about. But before we get to that, please like, share, and subscribe. We have so many listeners. Our podcast is going haywire. Wow. That is so cool. I would have never thought this would turn into what it's turned into. Yeah. There's nobody that does what we do, Dave. There's nobody out there that simply knows about buying, selling, and repairing cars and putting it together. This is raw and uncut. We don't freaking edit No. Hell no. 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 All right. Let's talk about important stuff right now. Um, when you're selling your car, I'm going to give you some easy steps, uh, to keep yourself safe. And I want to start about, start with when you are listing your car, if you are texting with somebody or you're messaging through Facebook, always meet them at a police station. But before you even do that, get them on the phone. Don't text with them anymore. Get them on the phone, listen to them, ask them questions, find out where they're coming from. Use your best judgment again. Like if you're sitting there texting with somebody, I I literally had somebody, I I am not kidding. This guy was on Craigslist and one of my, (laughs) one of my agents caught this. He happened to be a senior. He didn't know. He not only listed his car on On Craigslist. Craigslist. Okay. That's the first. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I didn't even know Craigslist was still around. It is. But he put his address in the on the freaking ad. Wow. He put his address on the ad. That's just asking to get scammed. Yeah. And he's got his license plate showing in the ad too. So you're like, you're like completely leaving yourself vulnerable. Yeah. Wow. It's okay to put your VIN because people can't go find you and no. find your house. No. But if you put your license plate and you're putting a uh, address. Yeah. Do not do it. And talk to these people on the phone. Don't go meeting at, you know, the back alley at eight o'clock at night and Guido's brothers back there <laughs> with a briefcase with 20 grand and then they're gonna rob you. Right. Okay. Meet at a police station. It's not even smart to meet at a bank. Because here's the thing: if someone's gonna pull a scam, they're not gonna pull it at the police station. No. But you know what's really important, Dave? What's that, Jay? When you go to the police station and you're getting ready to take a test drive you got to get their driver's license and send it to somebody that you love or right, knows you. Right, right. Or Tell you can talk them. to the local police station. If you yes. go to the police station, they'd probably be willing to help you out. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah, because you're right. A, a criminal 
is not going to come meet nobody in no police station. Absolutely. If I was going to try to rip somebody off, that's the last place they want to be. Here's another thing a lot of people don't know. Take a picture of the license plate of the car that they pulled up in, along with the driver's license and insurance card. Make sure they have insurance. Because do you want someone driving your car that doesn't have insurance? I don't. No, hell no. Okay. So now all those things, send it to somebody you love. That's tip number one. And I'm getting to the good stuff here in a second. Next, when you're, so I'm going to ask you a question, Dave. Okay. I'm going to throw out a curveball to you. I love this. Yeah. You when do. you're a, when, okay, when, if you're an individual and you're, sure. do you go on the test drive or do you let them go by themselves? There's a, there's a good answer to this. Um, I mean, I think there's some variables that I take into consideration. Um, you know, if, and like if they leave a car, I'd want the keys of that car they drove up in. Okay. So, you know, so they leave a car. They leave a car. Now remember, you're keys. a private owner. Right, okay. right. Yeah, I'm trying I mean, to think like a private owner. Okay, um, so you, so I'm taking it you're going to let them go on their own. Yeah, I'd feel them out. And okay. Just, and you they're know, good. Do they seem like good people? Yeah, they seem like good people. The best scam artists are really good people, aren't they? Yeah. So here's why. Let me ask you a question. Do you have GPS in your car? Nope. Okay. What if you did have GPS? Do you have home programmed on your GPS? Probably. Yeah, I would think so. Oh, and guess what? Now you're not home. You're waiting for them at the parking lot. Maybe they really don't want to drive your car. Maybe they want to rob you blind. Rob you blind. They're so going they, back to your house. Yeah. Let's say you don't have GPS. What else is in your car a lot of the times? Your address in the glove compartment. Yeah. What's that little thing on the little visor when you pull up to the house and the, the Oh, thing? the garage door Oh, opener. my gosh, the garage door opener. So now you're giving them the address. You're giving them the garage door, and you're waiting for them to come back at the police station, and they're like, huh, I wonder if they're going to come back. <laughs> but let me ask you this, Dave, because I know you're a top technician. Sure. What if they have that same exact car, and they just want to part off, your, off the car very similar to theirs? Maybe they just need a part that they can't get online, and maybe they just pull. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's. I think. I guess you know, if they got a, if they pull up in in Guido's jalopy, <laughs> yeah, I probably want to go with them. All right, but here's the thing: scam artists don't come out, come out, and they're not, they're not like rough looking people a lot of times. No, they, they look, they'll be your they best look friend. Really handsome, just like you and me. Absolutely. So here's the here's the thing. Um. Oh, one of our one of we actually have uh, somebody had chimed in. You go with them because you're still responsible for the vehicle. Mm. Brian, uh, Brian actually just made that comment. Thank you, Brian. And we're watching you, by the way. Um, he is exactly right. And here's why you go with them because it's the least amount of um, potential scam. Here's the other thing: if you do go with them. They may kidnap you and put you in the trunk and never take you back again. So these are things that you just have to, these are risks, right? Yeah, you're right. Meeting at the police station, I think leaving right. is all that. Or, you know, I mean, when I sold cars out of my backyard garage, mm -hmm. you know, I, I always felt comfortable because I'm like, a criminal is not going to come to my bed, my house because they don't know what the hell they're coming into. Thank you for that comment, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. We have got two more things to talk about that are really important. And... Take a pen and paper out because this is a big one. Everybody listening, here we go. How do you pay for it? How do you accept payment, Dave? How do I accept payment? Well, I'm going to say you're a private owner because now, right now, right okay. now, right now, you're a professional. Yeah, right, right. Okay, you're not a professional now. You're a private owner. You do, you do this once every three to five to ten years. I want cash. Okay, let's say it is a twelve thousand dollar car. Do you still want cash? I probably want to meet at, at a bank at my ah, bank. Ah, now we're I, getting somewhere. I'd say let's meet at my bank, and I'll let my bank tell me that your check's good or the cash is good because they can run it through their little machine and verify it. There's a little thing called counterfeit money. Yeah. And or, one, of, one of our good friends at the credit union, Megan, knows this, and I think Megan probably was listening to us right now. There's a little thing called counterfeit money. It's when Guido comes with a briefcase and it turns out the money's not real. And if it's anything over $10,000 that you're accepting, you have to fill out an IRS form. Why is that? Taxes. Taxes. Because that's called, there are people that are money launderers and they're throwing around cash left and right. 
If they pay more than $10,000, you better darn well make sure that they fill out an IRS form. And the only way I would accept anything is a cashier's check. And I do agree, Dave, that either you go to your bank or you watch the check get cut at their bank. And if they're getting a check cut check in their bank, like what we do at iAutoAgent when we're selling cars for people, we will actually verify that check. We will make the buyer send us the, the check so we can verify it. And then we re-verify it when we actually get to the closing at the bank. How about yeah. that? The final thing, and I know I touched on this earlier, is make sure that you're downloading a bill of sale. If you're in Missouri, it's Form 1957. It's a great, I mean, Google's a great thing. You just type in Form 1957, hit PDF, hit print, print out two copies or one copy, take a picture of it. Now you've got proof that you sold your car. Because guess what also happens, and I know we're running a little bit late here, but I got one really good one. Guess what happens when you don't take your plates off your car? Ooh, they're still tied to you. Exactly. That has happened before to many people. And years ago, when I was first getting into this business, I learned a really tough lesson. Ooh. The person that we sold the car to was getting part of was giving uh, like to park in, in in like areas they shouldn't, and there were all these parking tickets coming to the uh, to the license plate that was on the car. Sure, yeah. So little little tidbit there. Make sure that you do that. I know we went over a little bit today, but I really hope that everybody got a lot out of it. And one more thing before we leave, I wanted to thank Techie Tony again with Techie Tony Media. If you simply send an email to start at techietonymedia.com. He's going to give you a 15-minute consultation. You want to have a beautiful podcast like this, you can do it. And one last thing, you text 57838 and the word car, you will get my free ebook. A lot of this stuff is already in the book. Use it. Use it in good spirits. And Dave, you have anything else before we sign off? No, man. We're good to go. This is only part one. Stay tuned for part two.